let's learn something about the Nissan GTR. I did in some very precursory, precursory brief search before watching this. It seemed like this car was banned in the United States, which is really odd that it would be banned in like the country in the world that is like the most car centric, I think. I wonder what the heck there is. <laughs> what is this car? Like why, why is it banned? But let's, uh, let's check out the skyline. It's the twin turbo all wheel drive Titan from Japan that turned the world on its head. It came, it saw, it conquered, then it did it again five more times. I've said it before and I'm gonna say it again. Donut might not exist without this car. This is everything you need to know to get up to speed on the Nissan Skyline GTR. The GTR is such a special car to so many people that it only makes sense that we cover it again for episode 100, the way we should have from the beginning. Okay, so if this car has changed the world five times, why have I not heard about it? <laughs> Never heard of this car before. I don't think I've ever seen this car before. Either I've been living under a rock or this is just something that people who are like car people know about. Should I, should I know this car? Also, I've never heard an American anyway pronounce a Nissan. I've always heard it as Nissan. How, how did the Japanese pronounce it? The first Nissan Skyline GTR debutted in 1969. The okay, so obviously debutted. So this guy likes to say words wrong, apparently, just as a joke. Never mind. <laughs> the first Nissan Skyline GTR debutted in 1969. The brainchild of Nissan company man Shinichiro Sakurai, born in Yokohama in 1929. Shinichiro was a no-nonsense man who expected the best from all of his employees. He was known to train freshman engineers by making them practice tracing lines from morning till quitting time for weeks. His reason was that if a designer who was trained in technical drawings did not see the point of drawing simple lines and gave up, they should not be designing cars. Sakurai son had visited Europe and was okay. inspired by the Formula One racers he saw in person. After getting back to Japan, the Prince Motor Company put him in charge of building a racing car for the company. This led to the GTR's predecessor, the Skyline 2000 GT. Being a perfectionist, he knew it could be better. So in 69A, they dropped the GTR. The GTR was a handsome looking four-door sedan with Sakurai had taken a detuned two liter straight six from the Prince R380 race car and stuffed it under the hood of the Skyline sedan. The Prince R380 was sort of like Japan's version of the GT40, but instead of being designed to beat Ferrari at Le Mans, it was designed to beat Porsche in the Japan Grand Prix. It was a big deal. Did you say Ferrari? Sort of like Japan's version of the GT40, but instead of being designed to beat Ferrari at Le Mans, it was designed to beat Porsche in the Japan Grand Prix. Oh, to, to beat them. So it was designed to beat a Ferrari in a Porsche. No, it was designed to beat a Porsche. <laughs> is that right? Also, what the heck is- I've never seen a car with the side mirrors on the hood. It doesn't even look like a- this car anyway it doesn't look like a race car. It looks like a- more like a Rolls Royce type. Like a- like a car you would chauffeur somebody around in. It was a big deal for Nissan. It was a big deal for Japan to put that winning engine in a passenger car. Keep in mind that sports sedans like this really didn't exist back then. Unless you count the muscle cars that were at their peak in America at the time, but those couldn't really handle. The GTR, on the other hand, well, it could. <laughs> With 160 buff as can be horses and semi-trailing arm suspension, the Skyline GTR was an absolute maniac on the track. It racked up 49 dubs. It also earned itself a cute little nickname. It was Boxy or Hako in Japanese. It was a Suka or Skyline in Japanese. Hako Suka. Hakosuka! With so many wins right out the gate, Sukurai son knew he found a winning formula. Little car, big engine, you can't lose. The 1971 GTR Coupe had a shorter wheelbase and was wider than the previous model and looked more aggro too. Shorter and more aggressive looking? 
Sounds like my brother Lars. The coupe also came with wider tires and a real spoiler. There was no mistake, this Nissan was a true sports car. Shinichiro overhauled the GTR entirely in 1972, this time adopting some muscle car fastback Flavor. Thanks to a strange marketing campaign featuring two fun loving kids named Mary and Ken. Ken to Mary no Skyline. This GTR is often referred to as the Ken Mary. Unlike the previous cars, this GTR was not available in four door form. Even though it looked like a muscle car designed by the Ram Chargers. Ram Chargers! The Ken Mary sure didn't drive like one. It was available with front and rear disc brakes, which was pretty uncommon for the time. Unfortunately, Nissan was only able to pump out 197 of these pups because of a little thing called the gas crisis. Then, in 1984, Sakurai's son had fallen ill and was unable to complete the design of the next generation Skyline. He gave the assignment to the only man he trusted with the task, an engineer named Nagamori Ito. Ito-san had been a student of Shinichiro for years and was ready to do his mentor proud. The next Skyline, the R31, was slated for the release in 1985, 10 years before Post Malone was born. Coincidence? Sakurai son was a legendary figure in the Japanese auto industry at this point. A man it? who was known to call the Skyline his alter ego and, and Naginori. And Naginori had to finish designing his successor while his boss was in the hospital. What was a young man to do? The R31 dropped in 85 to lukewarm reception. Skyline diehards are a tough- I'm sorry, I'm having a hard time wrapping my head around this being a, uh, like a race car. It doesn't look like one. It's, it just looks like more like a normal car to me. At least the side mirrors are actually up. It was throwing me off with them being on the hood like that. It just doesn't look right. Crowd to please, and this new car just didn't do it for him. Feeling that he had shamed himself and brought dishonor to his mentor, Ito-san went back to the drawing board and got working on a true successor to the cars that Sakurai-san had made a worldwide phenomenon. <laughs> Phenomenon. The next GTR would be designed with one objective in mind in two phases. Dominate the Japanese Touring Car Championship Group A division, then take over the world. The new engine would also be turbocharged, but also had a larger stroke than the previous RB25. They called it the RB26 DETT. Welcome to the world, you legend, you. Ito san and the team dreamed up a new body to tuck this new engine under. The new and improved R32 GTR was a sporty but understated looking new goop. When they married the new chassis and the new drivetrain together, something new and amazing happened. The new car was a new level of new good. They called it great. Starting in 1989, the R32 GTR race car was entered into the Japanese Touring Car Championships Group A, the series it was designed to dominate out of all 29 races it entered. The R32 won every single one of I know, you know that blue Calsana car from Gran Turismo 4? It won both the 1990 and 1994 JTCC championships, cementing it as the most famous R32 of all race cars. In 1990, the R32 went over to the Nürburgring and ran in the 24 hour race and won. It went to Spa and won there. It went to McCall and you guessed it, it won there too. But the R32's most impactful victories were still yet to come. Gibson Motorsport and the Nissan GTR won the ATCC Group A Championship in 1990, 1991, and 1992. The I'm gonna be honest, I don't know what any of these races are. I, I, don't, really, I don't really know how impressive that's supposed to be. But, I mean, I guess I'm glad it's at one. Absolutely crushing victories earned a nickname for those monstrous Nissans. They were titans from the land of the rising sun who smashed anything in their path. From then on, the GTR would be known as Godzilla. 
people were getting tired of seeing Nissans win all the time. So for the 1993 season, the ATCC changed its rules heavily favoring the V8 powered Fords. Regardless, Naganori Ito, his team, and Gibson Motorsport had achieved Nissan's goal of reclaiming the performance drone. The R32 GTR was a great car, no doubt, but at this point in the story, it shouldn't be a surprise that Nissan wanted the GTR to be even better. The GTR team was now led by Kozo Watanabe. While testing the R33 prototype at the Nürburgring, engineer and test driver Hiroyoshi Kato welded brace bars underneath the car to harden the dang thing up. The bodywork was also much smoother. The R33's wheelbase was four inches longer and an inch wider than the previous gen. Turns out, the longer wheelbase was a good thing. The R33 was more stable at high speed and the reworked aerodynamics reduced lift in the front by nearly half. The new GTR had a redesigned all-wheel drive system that could better split the torque between all four wheels, which all but solved the understeer problem of the previous car. The rear wheel steering system was also upgraded with electric servos, which could be adjusted on the fly faster and more accurately than the old hydraulic system. The R33 was 20 seconds faster than the R32 around the Nürburgring. With it I do have to admit, even though this, this particular car, the silver one they're showing right here, it doesn't have, I think it's because of the way the front is designed, it looks more like your run-of-the-mill sedan that you would see just out in the road. The blue one that they showed on the freeway had more of that race car design on the front. Just watching this car take that turn, it definitely doesn't handle like a regular sedan. This is a very strange car. Still don't know why it would be illegal. Time of seven minutes, 59 seconds, making it the first sport coupe to go around that track in under eight minutes. There were tons of special edition R33 GTRs. There was the super limited Midnight Purple option, supposedly named for the infamous Midnight Club Street Racing Syndicate. <laughs> then there was the Spec B, which featured stiffer suspension and an active rear differential, which locked under acceleration and opened up when off the gas, making sharp turns easier. <laughs> then there was the Le Mans, or LM, which had its all-wheel drive system removed and a more powerful 400 horsepower engine. They only made three of these things. Two were race cars that competed in GT1 racing and one road car, which now lives in Nissan headquarters, AKA. Kind of like this one. The front has a little bit too much. I don't like the holes right in the middle of the bumper there. Overall, I like it. I like the uh, blue around the wheels. I don't know, I like the color too. I like the color. They only made three of these things. Two were race cars that competed in GT1 racing and one road car, which now lives in Nissan headquarters, AKA my house. The coolest R33 of he, all that's was the GTR 400R. R is for racing. Instead of the RB26, like all the rest of the GTRs, this special edition had a custom RB bored and stroked out to make more power, baby! How much more power? 400 hertz per. Yes! The 400R had a 0 to 60 of 4 seconds and a top speed of 180 miles per. Hot damn! Nissan planned on making 100 of these bad boys, but only ended up making 44, making them super duper pooper rare. The R33 yeah. is the dark horse of the GTR line. It's definitely bigger than the others, like Nolan, who's a thick boy, and not as popular, also like Nolan, but. Let's give it time, and I think both of them will come into their own. No one wrote this. <laughs> However, Watanabe heard people's criticism, heard they wanted more, so they would get more. Just like the leap from R32 to R33, a major improvement for the R34 was aerodynamics. This car wasn't sleek like last time. The R34 is a blocky boy with angular cuts and aggressive features like a stealth bomber. Small divots on the fenders direct air around the front wheels, pulling warm air out from the engine bay and cooling the brakes as much as 100 degrees Fahrenheit. That's 50 degrees centigrade. The air evacuation and new reworked front splitter work together to give the front end a lift coefficient of 0.1, which 
is basically nothing. <laughs> under the hood, the what's a lift coefficient? Is that like when the air like is under the car and that's how like the, all the the cars wreck, like in NASCAR and stuff? Is because they start they get lifted off the ground. Turbo got a new ball bearing ceramic turbine, which decreased full time and increased reliability. The R34's engine also had more aggressive camshafts, even more power, baby. The new GTR was fitted with a six speed get track transmission. The all wheel drive was better. The rear wheel steering was better. Everything was better. And the special editions added even more better on top of that. There was the V-Spec, the V-Spec N1, V-Spec 2, V-Spec 2 NUR, V-Spec 2 N1, M-Spec and M-Spec NUR. And don't even get me started on the race cars. The R34 was a distillation of everything that made a GTR a GTR. This is giving me vibes about my own car. I have a Hyundai Veloster and there are spec models just like this. There are Turbo models. It's a very sporty looking car, but it's this is kind of giving me the same vibes in the way that Hyundai markets the Veloster. Although I think this is uh, maybe just like a, a level up <laughs> from that. So, in 2001, Nissan unveiled the GTR concept. Unlike the previous GTR models, this car would not be a souped up Skyline but its own thing entirely. It's the like design a, team for this concept was- The back of this looks like um, a Chevy Corvette. The design team for this concept was led by Hiroshi Hazagawa, who had worked on the Sylvia S13, S14, and the R34. The concept square shape and broad wheel arches were penned to look like the shoulders of a friggin' samurai. This is, this is a really modern looking design for 2001. I like this one. A lot, actually. I like that there aren't any door handles that I can see, although there's like a little circular dent thing. Maybe that's how you open the door. I like the cars. They look a little sci-fi-ish. Tail lights are definitely GTR. The only major deviation from the design, if you think about it, were the headlights, which had a modern, more vertical, Z-like look. The new GTR or R35 hit the market in 2007. No longer was the GTR powered by the RB26. It had done its task well but it was time for something different, something new. The VR38 DETT is an all aluminum twin turbocharged V6 wow. every inch. I love I just love stuff like this. I mean, just look how clean that is. Twin turbocharged V6 every engine is assembled by hand in a clean room and only the most experienced Nissan mechanics are allowed to work there. There's only four guys with 100 years of combined experience between them building the engines for every GTR and they deserve recognition. I apologize if I butcher your name. Tsunemi Oyama, Nobumitsu Gozu, Izumi Shioya, and Takumi Kurosawa. The VR38 and this Wonder if these guys still do it. Actually made 480 Hersbers. That wasn't super powerful, but when has the GTR ever been about raw power? I'll give you a hint. Never. The VR was hooked up to an updated version of Nissan's Atezza system that prioritizes rear grip this time around. The combination of power and truly unbelievable all-wheel drive grip made the GTR one of the hardest launching cars in history, achieving zero to 60 in a lightning fast 3.2 seconds. Performance like that made the GTR a YouTube mainstay with thousands of videos showing off cars at blistering speed. <laughs> The guy went like 20 feet and that stopped. What is like the record for the fastest zero to 60? People say that it drives like a video game, like that's a negative. The only reason we know about GTRs is because of Gran Turismo. So of course oh. the R35 drives like a video game. And of course, there were special editions and racing versions, like the 2008 Nismo GT500. This car was so dominant that the Super GT League weighed it down with 100 kilogram ballast, and it still won. 
the 2008 championship. It was the first car to achieve a championship with a weight penalty in a decade. The last team to do that was the Pennzoil team in 98, behind the wheel of a bright yellow R34 GTR. <laughs> I actually enjoy that even though I've never been like super into cars before. I've always had a weird desire to like learn about the motors and just kind of like how they work. I don't know, I, I would love to be able to like do my own like repairs and modifications to my car. So I do have like some attachment to cars, but I'm not as in, I mean, I don't understand all of the lingo that they were talking about. I don't know what a V8 or a V6 engine is. I know they're valves, right? Valves, six or eight valves in the engine. I don't really know what they do. It would be kind of nice, I guess, to, to know what they're talking about when they talk about all that stuff. It was good like I enjoy learning about a car that I didn't know existed uh, I'm just kind of surprised I've never heard of this car before but I guarantee you that I would maybe recognize it now if I saw it out on the road but I also learned about the existence of a Toyota Supra which I didn't know about that I also would have never like associated a Nissan or Nissan you know however you say it with racing I know about Fords being in like NASCAR and stuff but which I also would not associate with racing like you just a Ford in my mind is like your steadfast stereotypical sedan that a middle class family in the suburbs would own. <laughs> like that's what I associate Ford with even though I, I'm aware that the like NASCAR uses them it's just weird thinking about a Ford being a race car you know so I don't know and, and Toyota's I guess my, my only association with all of these car brands is just like run of the mill uh, everyday cars so this opened up my eyes to a completely different world of cars that I uh, didn't know existed. I guess I did know it existed abstractly. I had some idea about it, but the specifics, you know, I don't know. So it was nice to learn about the Nissan GTR Skyline and just the regular GTR 3435. Seems like the 34 is the uh, favorite model of a lot of people. So yeah, there you go. Appreciate it, Dimitri, for the uh, suggestion. If you guys have a suggestion for what car vehicle motor thing should come next in this series let me know um i've had some people ask me to get into like formula one racing which i've not i've only seen like very very short clips of that before look forward to your comments please answer my questions if you can uh down below and we'll see what we come up with next